Thank you. And now we will talk uh, about DevOps on AWS with Saikad Banerjee, um, Senior Technical Product Manager at AWS. Hello, Saikad. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Doing really well. We're really, really glad to have you. DevOps is a topic that you know we talk a lot at TPLS conferences. AWS is a platform that uh, a lot of people use. <laughs> uh, so DevOps on AWS, what could uh, what could go wrong? You know. <laughs> yeah, I I absolutely hope nothing goes wrong. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, let's I get think. started. Yep. See you. Yep. Cool. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Saikal Banerjee. I'm a senior product manager here at AWS. And today I'm going to talk to you about DevOps. Um, this virtual setting is uh, not weird to me anymore. And this is my second conference in the last six months. So I think we're going to be fine. So a little about my background. Um, so I have been in the tech industry for over 10 years now and have moved through like various technology roles like uh, software development engineer, uh, technical architect, uh, development manager, and now I'm a product manager. And I've worked in varying industries, right? Like from uh, consulting, power sector, uh, retail, uh, gaming, and now um, I'm, I'm in one of the top uh, cloud providers. Uh, and I can tell you how important DevOps has been in my journey. Um, I think I have learned an inevitable fact that if you're serious about software development, uh, you have to do DevOps. There's no way around it. Uh, the sooner you adopt um, it for your team and your organization, the better it is. So with that, let's get started. So honestly, I don't do agenda slides, but I think we are rushed for time here in like 25 minutes. But I, so I think a little orientation could help. So we're going to discuss about DevOps, like where we'll quickly touch upon uh, why DevOps and uh, what is DevOps and why is it important? Secondly, we'll talk about that even though we know that DevOps is important, why is not everybody using it? And why is everybody not quickly adopting it? Right. And finally, we'll touch upon uh, why DevOps and AWS. Uh, what are the tools we have, how we differentiate, and uh, we'll take it from there. So I do not think we'll have time towards the end of the presentation for a Q&A. So that's why I have invited um, my colleague, uh, Steve Roberts, who's a senior developer advocate at AWS with a ton of experience to answer your questions in the chat. So do not wait until the end of the presentation with your questions, fire them away in the chat and Steve will take care of them. So let's get to it. So why DevOps? At AWS, we believe that well-architected applications require well-orchestrated governance and DevOps provides a mechanism to enable this orchestration. Um, so as we in AWS define it, uh, DevOps is a combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increases an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity, evolving and improving products at a faster pace than organizations using traditional software development and infrastructure management processes. This speed enables organizations to better serve their customers and compete more effectively in the market. I can read a slide. But what I mean to say is that customers are the core of your software development. If you are able to deliver to your customers, nothing else matters. And DevOps helps you with that, improving the whole chain of software development. So we have different stages for DevOps, uh, for the person who's just getting started with DevOps. It doesn't really only comprise of CI and CD. DevOps is the whole chain of software development, and it can be utilized, and there are tools for every segment of it. So we have all seen the microservice revolution. As a result, we have seen two pizza teams coming up in our uh, software development organizations. At AWS, we take pride in these two pizza teams. Even though they're great, 
and improves agility in the processes, they are quite often hard to manage uh, in tandem to each other, right? So it often leads to organization silos and lack of collaboration. And that, that leads to scope creeps and lack of integration, thereby make, like not giving the customer the right experience in the softwares that they expect. So that's a problem we have been able to manage at AWS with DevOps. So we have seen, and research also suggests this, that teams that ad adopt modern software practices are more agile and display higher performance. Teams who automate software delivery with, uh, with CD have increased development deployment frequency, reduced change lead times, and reduced change failure rates. That's why DevOps matters. The research also suggests that the teams uh, who automate software delivery with CD champion better automated processes, a higher degree of testing and deployment automation, a higher degree of automation risk mitigation. Um, I know these are pretty high level terms, but you get the gist of it, right? You, you need to automate to reduce human interaction and to, you need to automate to reduce the human errors and overall thereby creating a DevOps mindset in your companies. So now we have seen why DevOps is important. And I think most companies have already seen the results, but the results of these researches basically. But why have companies not adopted DevOps? Is it hard? But why? Like, and if it is hard, what should we do about it? So one thing we hear a lot is it's just too difficult to get started. Uh, there are a lot of different tools and solution vendors out there. Uh, you need to sort through all of them and build out a relationship. Then you need to write glue code to integrate them with your software. And then you have never, which with the tools were never designed to work together in the first place, right? Typically, there's no concern over the lack of lack of, there's also concern over the lack of oversight, like lack of centralized oversight, because if one team is working on a project using some tool, the other team is not using that tool and working on a different project, it might be very difficult to integrate these two applications going forward. Finally, what are the compliance and security risks that we see, right? Like, there are all the applications secure? Are all the applica applications fit the similar security guidelines across the company? How do we manage these? So they don't really know how to do it, and so they can't get past the early stages. But then there's one next thing. Even successful de like DevOps organizations, they face challenges. They face challenges with high total cost of ownership, or TCO. So with existing solutions, you end up paying for that. So, and you can, you either pay by purchasing a new solution or you pay by paying time and people who are doing a software development but are spending a ton of time actually focusing on uh, operations. So time spent managing Jenkins plugins and upgrades is time not spent in value-added work. Uh, poor security posture, I think we covered that in the last slide. No centralized oversight. Again, same thing, like you need a, a, an ecosystem to actually uh, add, to, add to your security posture or the or overall control of your applications. And too much downtime. Like this is, this is actually crazy, right? We, even though we are in the world where um, we do uh, deployments uh, like every hour if required, but still we handle uh, down, like many companies handle downtime and have like one or two uh, hours of downtime, uh, which is kind of a loss in the business. Also, DevOps is about bringing devs and ops closer together. That's DevOps, right? But some people get overly focused on the definitions in a way that's unhelpful. DevOps has changed the world. It has brought uh, development and, and ops closer, uh, help teams go faster, and focusing on uh, solving problems but improved engineers' job satisfaction. As a result, we're seeing an explosion of innovation. 
But at the same time, DevOps gets distorted at different companies where people don't really understand that it is not about eliminating operations. It's not about developers doing the job of operators. And it is definitely not about the org structure. As a result, they think DevOps isn't for us. So drop the baggage. And here are four A's um, about modern DevOps, uh, de uh, modern DevOps. So accountability, it brings DevOps and ops teams uh, to improve ownership. Uh, automation, it speeds up. It speeds up delivery and reduces human interaction and errors. Um, awareness to improve our instrumentation of systems so that you can have more visibility. Um, and autonomy to Im improve centralized governance across different layers of the organization. So what does modern DevOps solves? We see that using modern DevOps methodologies uh, developers can provision infrastructure on demand, uh, automate delivery using CD pipelines, incorporate security best practices into every application, uh, include instrumentation in applications, and finally standardize on tools and best practices. So how to implement DevOps tooling? I know about this slide, it's crazy, the number of tools available out there. You could go through all of these or choose DevOps on AWS. But why should you choose DevOps on AWS? So what do we have to offer? We offer an end-to-end -end solution that is designed to work together from CICD to observability to infrastructure as code to security. You can build a mature DevOps um, like system and DevOps practice within your organization using exclusively or predominantly AWS tools with native integrations. Uh, where do we, where, where, where we do have like gaps, we have native integrations with top vendors in the space to make it easy as possible for you. Uh, we take security so seriously that we call it it, it's a job zero and availability is a job one. Uh, and then, and, and when we build solution for our customers, we include security measures to begin with. Um, so you don't have to come back and implement security in your applications. So expertise is not required. Uh, you can use machine learning and Amazon best practices to uh, provide you with actionable insights in your code, in your in your dev in your DevOps uh, ecosystem that you develop. It's competitively priced. Uh, we aggressively price it to make it cheaper, and we always give the give the cost savings that we see back to our customers. Like that's the Amazon ethos. Um, but it's it's built for. It's built for the developer and for the organization. It's not only focused on uh, developers to go hack away into their applications, but it also gives the organization some control around the organizational guard guardrails that they want to manage their whole e whole um, whole DevOps practice. Uh, it's deeply integrated into your favorite uh, third-party offerings that you're already using. For example. Say GitLab will come to that slide a little later. We work heavily with our partners to make a, a wholesome DevOps experience for our customers. We want to meet where customers are. Um, so here's a slide where we have mapped the different stages in the DevOps process with some of the AWS offerings. Um, in, in the coding uh, or author segment, you can use the browser-based IDE um, Cloud9, uh, IDE toolkits for your favorite IDEs, uh, such as Visual Studio, IntelliJ, and we have SDKs for all the popular languages like .NET, Java, Python, among others. Um, in the source and artifact segment, you can use AWS Code Commit uh, as a Git repository, um, AWS Code Artifact to save your packages, um, a Amazon ECR, to, as a container repository, you can save uh, your containers and ECR public, where you can save your containers and share it across your organization or even outside. 
And Code Guru, it gives you, uh, it, 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 you can use Code Guru to actually use machine learning in your tools, uh, in, in, in your code to understand uh, where, which are your most expensive lines of code and how uh, you, your code is performing and so on. So in, in, in the build and test segment, you have code build. Uh, essentially, you can write YAML uh, to uh, set, up your, uh, your set up your build processes. And in the deploy section, you have code deploy to help you deploy to various uh, AWS uh, services. Uh, finally, in the monitoring, uh, you have X-Ray, CloudWatch, um, DevOps Guru and AWS Config, uh, among others. This is in no way or form the only services that we have. We have about 160 of those. Obviously, not everything is DevOps or related, but these are the top ones that I want to showcase here. So at AWS, as I mentioned, security is job zero. We are super focused on security uh, from restricted access to storing safely in the cloud. We take customers' uh, security and privacy needs very seriously. Um, we also offer private network options in the VPCs. We provide services to scan vulnerabilities, and we work well with Sneak. So you could use Sneak in conjunction with your AWS, um, your applications on AWS, and you can get the active scannings and so on. And finally, AWS handles all the patching. I know patching can be pain. Uh, it was pain for me in my previous organization. And AWS handles all the patching so that our customers don't need to get into that headache every month. Um, so, so on AWS, you don't need to be a DevOps expert uh, to use our DevOps tools. You can leverage AI uh, to improve uh, your code, improve your the way you set up your DevOps. You can get insights around instrumentation, and you can actually build on top of those recommendations. So tools like AWS Control Tower, Service Catalog, and Cloud Formation Guard makes it easy for central teams to govern distributed uh, development teams, uh, enabling them to actually go fast while maintaining compliance and other best practices. Uh, for example, if you want all the developers in your organization to have a similar persona and you want to build that persona into an account structure or an account blueprint, you could go to Control Tower and utilize uh, their custom account factories. And, and currently, uh, it's a custom, uh, it's the account factory, and then it, it will have the blueprints that you can replicate across your different teams in the organization. And you can actually play with that blueprint to incorporate different guardrails that you want to set your DevOps ecosystem with. So at the end of the day, cost does matter. Um, AWS offers one of the lowest TCOs. Uh, we're competitively priced. And with, as you know, we, we champion the pay-as-you-go structure. And um, the services are fully managed. So you don't have to spend overhead in managing these services yourself. You don't, don't have to manage infrastructure. You don't have to manage your thousand build servers if you need them. You can just use code build and, uh, and, and EC2 will handle uh, all the management uh, of that. And this is the slide that I was talking about. We are heavily and we are highly integrated uh, with the most popular um, third-party providers. For example, GitHub, Atlassian, uh, Terraform, um, JetBrains, uh, GitLab, and Sneak. And we we are also we also have integrations with several uh, others like uh, Datadog and um, so. And 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 Pulumi now that we are going into more infrastructure as a code, uh, so we have heavy integrations with these partners, and I think this is what makes our DevOps offerings um, great. Is that it not only solves the purpose within AWS, but if you are if your application is on AWS and you are already using one of these existing tools. What you could leverage from is that we like 
to meet where our customers are at and not have them move around into different tools and technologies because we know how difficult it is to train developers uh, into new new tools every every time you develop a new application right so um so it it is it is cost in incentive in, in, intensive and you have to um give up on time that could have been spent on us uh, like developing features so we really take pride in our integrations with with different partners finally these are some of the customer stories um so our customers are pioneering uh, modern applications, whether it is reducing costs, building faster systems, innovating faster, or developing faster, um, customers are getting much more out of the cloud uh, than just hosted VMs. Uh, so there are so many stories, but I think the most interesting one um, was that Washington Post, who created a new source of revenue uh, by creating Arc Publishing, is using so Arc Publishing is a software as a service platform that enables any media company to take advantage of the same publishing platform. Uh, the, so Washington Post is built uh, for its own uh, its own newsroom in order to deliver better outcomes faster. Uh, they they migrated from a monolith to microservices uh, architecture and gave the power to small and distributed teams to innovate autonomously and uh, with low central oversight. But they could achieve that because they set up the DevOps practice um, within, within their organization and are kind of building on top of the AWS tools. Uh, for example, CloudFormation, uh, AWS code build, and code pipeline. Um, so the focal point of everything we do at AWS is our customers. Uh, we love them and talk to them regularly on several occasions. Uh, they've told us that code, code deploy and code commit together has made building application environments easier and quicker. They have told us code uh, artifact helped them to focus on code and not worry about patches, uh, patching your servers, uh, networking, and so on. So customers love DevOps and AWS. So when are you uh, starting your DevOps journey with us? Um, thank you for your time. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I know we didn't have time um, in this presentation. I mean, I didn't have time in this presentation to take your questions. I am sure Steve has been taking your questions uh, in chat. Uh, I don't have the visibility of your questions. So feel free to connect afterwards. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Steve answered more, most of the questions. We still have uh, uh, one, one minute and a half for questions. Uh, we have a question from uh, Twitter, actually. Uh, how would you implement regulation into DevOps, like regulation checks, probably like at the test or the build phase? Uh, you know, the, the theme of the event is API-driven regulation. So uh, PSD2 for banking, GDPR, like how would you, how would you do it? Uh, so if they're if they are custom regulations, I think they can be handled. Uh, they can be handled from an application to application basis. But if you want organizational regulations and have a set of checks for your every application, so if they are application focused regulation, which is essentially security based, uh, so you need to develop your security uh, checks or scans beforehand so that you can actually run them on your application and put them into code build as a yaml template so when your application gets built they get tested along those uh, checks that you have already written yeah uh yeah thank you thank you very much i think we're just on the right timing it's 12 50 PM Eastern time. Thank you very okay. much, uh, Salkat. Thank you, Steve, for answering the questions we had in the chat. And yes, Thanks, looking Steve. forward having you in an other conferences, continue, continuing to uh, teach us about DevOps and AWS. Thank Thanks, you very Steve. much, Salkat. Thank you.